All right, joining us now is Mr. Richard Painter. He's an American uh, lawyer, independent political analyst. Thank you very much, Mr. Painter. I'm sure you, like uh, millions around the world, watch the debate very closely. Uh, the consensus view seems to be, or at least a large number of people seem to think, that Kamala Harris had the superior debate night compared to Donald Trump. But what we're interested in is, A, what's your view on who you thought won the debate? And what sort of bearing will that have, the debate performance, on the race itself? Well, Donald Trump had some of the same problems that Joe Biden had uh, being coherent. Uh, and Joe Biden's, uh, President Biden's debate performance was quite poor uh, uh, over the summer, which is what led him to uh, withdraw from the race. But one thing people did not notice is that Donald Trump has deteriorated substantially. And we saw that last night on top of the fact that he just can't even recognize basic facts. I mean, he did lose the 2020 election. Uh, but we don't argue in the United States about who won the Super Bowl last year or who won the 2020 election. This is the 2024 election. And if you can't even figure out what happened in 2020, uh, four years ago, and wants to just say something that's just completely not true, uh, you know, nobody's going to believe him on anything else. And, uh, you know, that and other problems, and he was rambling. Uh, it's really unfortunate. Uh, the Republican Party would be uh, well advised to do what the Democrats did uh, and uh, substitute another candidate. But it's very, very late in the game now, and they've already nominated him. Uh, and so it sounds like the Republicans are stuck with him through November. But it's not going to it's not going to be good in November. So, for the, so for we the have less than two months for the election. Uh, the question, though, is coming into this debate, when we had the initial announcement of Kamala Harris and the weeks uh, after that, she seemed to sort of you know, really energized both the Democratic base. You managed to get the support of the delegates very quickly. She had an initial bump in the polls, and then that sort of tapered off. Coming into this debate, uh, I think the New York Times poll had uh, put her behind Trump nationally. You think she's done enough on debate night with her performance to sort of turn the polls again into her favor? Well, we'll see where the polls go on this. Uh, she's a very impressive debater. I, I think far superior to Hillary Clinton. Uh, or uh, uh, Joe Biden in the first uh, uh, in the 2020 debates, uh, she's been uh, one of the best debaters uh, there. Uh, Barack Obama was a good debater as, as well, uh, but she's a trained uh, prosecutor. Uh, she's uh, tried cases in front of juries, uh, and she certainly used that experience uh, very, very well. Now, uh, a good debater does not necessarily translate into a good president, but she certainly made the case for herself uh, uh, very, very effectively. And once again, she's not up against opposition that's serious. Uh, I mean, Donald Trump didn't have anything serious to say last night. He just was rambling on and on uh, about his, how he, if he'd only been in the White House, there'd be no wars in America and we'd all be uh, filthy rich and uh, everything else. Uh, and uh, uh, there's no, just simply no substance there. I, I do want to ask you, um, you know, the, the, one of the things that she, that she seemed to, and this is a point that the Republicans have been sort of making over and over again about the immigration crisis. And, and somehow, of course, Trump was not able to put her on the mat on that issue uh, when it came to the debate. But if they were to keep hammering on this message, do you reckon that this will find some takers, that this will have resonance? And how much resonance may this have in the states that actually really matter, the half a dozen states, the swing states or the battleground states, uh, which eventually decide this election? We've had arguments about immigration in the United States uh, for well over 100 years, and we certainly have a very, very challenging situation at the southern border. But we had this problem under President Obama. We had it under President Trump. We've had it under President Biden. Uh, and we need the president and Congress to work together toward immigration reform. So people here illegally uh, are allowed to be here, but illegal people are removed. Uh, and, and we need to protect our borders. But the problem is Donald Trump is bringing rhetoric into the debate that's simply unnecessary. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, reference, racist reference uh, to immigrants. Uh, and there's some okay. white supremacist groups that he's refused to denounce. Uh, and indeed, his uh, race baiting of Kamala Harris herself. I, I mean, she is of a, a parentage from India and also from uh, the Dominican Republic. And say, well, are you black or are you not? I mean, we're, we're not interested in that in the United States. We're a country of immigrants. We come from all over the world. And uh, uh, this race baiting rhetoric uh, that we had during the Trump administration is just going to make the immigration problem harder to solve. Uh, and uh, so I just don't think that uh, voters uh, want to go back there.
All right, Mr. Payne, my final question. Uh, do you, so clearly, especially after last night's debate performance, uh, Kamala Harris seems to be uh, the favorite to win in November. Do you see anything changing that in the next two months? I mean, let's, let's not forget, eight, eight years ago, Hillary Clinton looked to shoe in from the presidency, but she lost. Well, um, a lot of Americans had a lot of reservations about Hillary Clinton, and so did I. I mean, I ended up supporting her because I thought that Donald Trump would be far worse. Uh, but Hillary Clinton uh, had a track record of some ethics problems uh, that she created for herself, and then the problems from the uh, Clinton administration uh, that really would have made it easy for any Republican but Donald Trump, I think, to, uh, to beat her quite soundly. And I, I was quite amazed that uh, Donald Trump was able to do that. Pamela Harris, on the other hand, is an experienced prosecutor with a really very clean record uh, in the ethics arena, which is where I've done most of my work. Uh, you can always try and find a scandal somewhere in someone's background. I guess you can always try that. But uh, I think she's coming into this, Kamala Harris, with a lot more uh, favorable um, image with the American people, uh, with average middle class voters uh, than, uh, than Hillary Clinton had. And very quickly, the way the Republicans have painted her as an extreme left, extreme progressive candidate, you don't find that deterring in any way for her to win at least the, the important, uh, what they call the Rust Belt states, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, uh, where it's, it's almost neck and neck in most of those, cities, particularly in Pennsylvania, it's almost a dead heat. Well, I, I mean, I'm more conservative than she is, but uh, I work for the for the Bush administration, uh, after all, and she's not a far left uh, radical. I mean, she made it very clear last night uh, that, uh, for example, Hamas uh, committed a terrorist attack against Israel. Uh, she's not with these crazies who are uh, at our college campuses somehow trying to justify or excuse what Hamas did and are calling for the abolition of Israel. Uh, she has not aligned herself uh, right. with the far left. She, she was a more traditional prosecutor in San Francisco. After she left the prosecutor's office in San Francisco, we got some left wingers in there who took her place, who uh, I think stopped uh, prosecuting crimes. And that was a problem. So, yeah, we, we do have an extreme left in America, but it's not very influential in the Democratic Party. They make more noise in the college campuses than anywhere else. And right. uh, call Kamala Harris, a, a leftist, is, is not really accurate. Uh, no, she's not as conservative as I would like. Uh, uh, but I see that Vice President Richard Cheney uh, uh, has endorsed Kamala Harris. And I don't think he agrees with her on a lot of issues either. But he recognizes the serious threat to the United States posed by Donald Trump. All right, Richard Painter, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, a lawyer, uh, political analyst, and of course, uh, former ethics lawyer with the White House in the Bush presidency. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. If you're tuned in, it's going to be a fascinating race uh, between now and November. Like I said, less than two months. Uh, yes, Kamala Harris had a phenomenal debate night by most uh, people's reckoning. She was the one who won the debate night. But whether or not she can carry through this momentum uh, up until Election Day and win on Election Day on the 5th of November, that is something that we will closely track virtually on a daily basis here on CNN News 18.